Hi, welcome to Shelf Starters. Um, this is going to be a really casual chat because we haven't planned really much at all <laughs> about our favourite audiobooks. Uh, yes, welcome everyone. Um, I am very keen on audiobooks, not mm -hmm. as a means unto their own, um, just as a supplement really to normal. Yeah, because you listen to them, you listen to them mainly while you're running. I find them a really great thing to have for when or you're doing other things. things. So multitasking actually and actually here's my bike in the background so <laughs> it's really good for when you're either on a bike this is my stationary mm -hmm. one or um treadmill housework yeah. many mm -hmm. um not so much in the car probably but public transport i think i i do on public transport not that i do much public transport anymore well, um but i thought you didn't really do it with housework or are you starting to now um i have started to a little lately yes nice but I, I just like, I really do love it, especially when I'm on treadmill or. Yeah, because you're not really having to focus on anything. You can really yes, get it's into the real escape time. from, you know, what you're doing, but also it's your time out. It's like meditation. And you can yeah. just like a, a space that I have reserved for audiobooks. So mm -hmm. I really do enjoy it. And I think. It makes me actually want to do chores. Like I, I do do it while I'm running or walking or public transporting and all that stuff. But I actually think mostly I do it when I'm doing stuff around the house. It's highly motivating. If you have to, if there's something you need to do and it yeah. maybe isn't. If I'm doing a big clean on a weekend or something yeah. that takes like a couple of hours to do the full flat. I am listening to an audio book and I don't mind doing that. Right. So. It, really, it really drives you there. I know it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the, the key to this is it can be quite, a lot of people have told me that this is their experience. It's really hard sometimes to follow the story, to maintain your focus. That's the difficulty they find when they're only using their oral skills. So yeah. when you're not, you're not using the words in front of them on a page, a lot of people find that they can lose focus. And so mm -hmm. honestly, I think the more complex the story, probably the more difficult in many ways. And there are probably key things that make it make a really good audio book. And I think obviously the reader, the quality of the actual. That's the number one. Yeah. Number one. Number one is the the narrator needs to not be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you I can usually I check need to be invested, Rosie, in their piece, yeah. I think. So I have actually found that nonfiction can be really excellent in, in an audio yes. form. Um, I'm thinking Michelle Obama beautiful oh yeah that was amazing yeah she does a great job she narrates it herself i've sometimes depending on the author sometimes it makes it so much better when it is the author doing their own well i've heard michelle obama one of my you know top enjoyable audio books for mm -hmm. sure. that's becoming by michelle obama yeah absolutely love that but i also love one by an australian writer who's actually a journalist rather than a writer lee sales and she oh, yeah. um an experience she wrote a non-fiction piece which was a collection of her recounts of experiences meeting people who were behind particular stories she pro has produced for television and it, it was called any it is called any ordinary day and it re she threaded the, the pieces together by the notion of we all wake up in the morning to an ordinary day but it can turn in a matter of minutes and become mm -hmm. for reasons good or bad often very challenging it can become an extraordinary day and what was so good about this as an audiobook was that she was so invested in her stories and she was so moved by the people the real life people that she had interviewed that you felt like you from her experience recounted in, in this book you felt like you knew them and could hear their voices by the way yeah. she read. And that was, I, I just, I thought it was great. I really loved it. it you know, not big, not heavy, mm -hmm. uh, an interesting, but, you know, not a massive premise, just a, but it was really well done and worked as an audio yeah. completely, completely. Um, and I, I, there's another one, Everywhere I Look by Helen Garner, also an Australian author. Is that also nonfiction? also non-fiction just recounting real life little episodes in her life and she's a writer so the detail 
the, the so would you say that um when it's it's non-fiction but in an, a kind of more of a story like a, a real story. memoir a memoir kind of thing story. Story. What you like? yes yeah I, I mean I cannot imagine really being intrigued by an audio book that you know is about the life of a plant or you know or <laughs> life cycle yeah you know plant. nature writing yeah, I, yeah. I think or, that, that there are possibly a few more like because I agree you wouldn't want something that's too heavy maybe oh. I did listen to invisible women yeah. um which is oh I can't remember the author's name but I will link it um put all the details down below yeah. um but uh invisible women is about bias in data yes and yes. technology yes um and that that was really really good to listen to because it was although it was like intellectual topics and things like that it wasn't too heavy on the facts and things no so that was fine um that's what I mean also you, John you, Ronson who John Ronson's um an investigative journalist um he's really funny he goes in and does like kind of more controversial um <laughs> Uh, topics and things like that interviews people and it is more like a story but it's like um it's him yeah investigating I guess yes. situations yes. so yes. he did um so you've been publicly shamed which is about uh cancel culture um in the media so like someone posting something stupid on Twitter and then their whole life being ruined yeah. kind of thing yeah. that sort of um yeah situation and he's done a few things he's got he's done something to do with terrorists no extremists yeah, all sorts of like, like he goes into cults and stuff like that. And it's just, um, yeah, yeah, really so interesting. A narrative going on. So, yeah, a little thing, bit more narrative would not work, would be like a how to guide or, you know, like I think that could be boring. And I think yeah. anything to not retain your attention in terms of data and um, scientific research could probably be mm -hmm. too hard. Especially if you need the like diagrams. Exactly. You, you wouldn't be able to, to manage it. But, yeah, mm -hmm. so if it's anyway, those those will probably be my top three in nonfiction for sure. Um, yeah, but fiction is entirely different. Fiction, I think, for an audio book, it needs to be yes, it's the reader absolutely, as we that's just obvious for all audio books. But yeah. there's it's got to be it's the character, it's the characters, mm -hmm. it, you know. So they feel real. Yes. But even if they're not real, so uh, uh, most obviously very not real, such as Richard Flanagan. I've told you about this, The Living Sea of Waking Dreams. Oh, yeah, well, it's got the magical realism. Yes, which I always think I hate but obviously don't. But um, <laughs> I thought that on audio was brilliant. You know, the really? voices, male and female voices okay so that's interesting so I was going to say one of my big I've got like some categories in my head of what I enjoy in a fiction audiobook yeah. and one of them is a um, multicast yes audiobook yes yes and yeah. this is that this gives you this absolute array of characters um in a family and and yeah. the whole sibling rivalry is really interesting the relationship between each individual character and their aging mother is really interesting and the backdrop is the fires raging in Tasmania at the time? Yeah, that, you know, were happening, like did happen when he was writing the book. But yeah. yeah, I I just thought that was a singular piece as an audio. Yeah, really good. Um, yeah, I can imagine that being good. I so for the multicast things, there was also um, Daisy Jones and the Six. You yes, listen to that one on an audio. I actually read it as a book, but I think I would have preferred it as an audio because it's told in it's about um, a band. Uh, yeah. and it's told like in interviews yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you get in like it's that interview style that I think works better yes. as an audio actually reading it um the other good thing with multicast ones that I've recently discovered is audible does um like bbc dramatizations of certain books like mainly classics and there's a whole Jane Austen collection which you can get the whole thing for one credit on audible yeah. um <laughs> where they they have a full cast doing the like it's obviously not the it's an abridged sort of version because it's just the, the dramatization but the, it's like a cast of famous actors as well yeah yeah doing each of Jane Austen books and it, yeah it's so um easy to listen to because also they do all the sound effects so you can hear like the carriages coming up and things like that like it's just it's, it's very much like you're there the world. yeah totally yeah the other one I loved also Shaggy Bang I oh is that good on the audio yes so 
Um, so that I would imagine would come under my other category of accents. Absolutely. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> it um, and it also comes over as more of, you know, an autobiography really mm -hmm. because, you know, you know, so, so, you've got that very so you've got the accent, you've got the biography aspect um, and you've got a deep sense of characters and dysfunctional relationships yeah against a backdrop of, you know, total um, awful class and lack of money, poverty. Uh, I thought that, I mean, it, you know, not an up kind of audio read. No, it's it's quite dark. In fact, I um, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as everyone else did because I think I, I read it at a time when that wasn't what I was wanting with my yeah. mood, you know. Yes. Like it just didn't match my read mood at the time because um, no. it was no. it's very heavy. Um, and I love, like, that I... I got nothing wrong with a story that is very depressing like I usually no. enjoy that that's fine but I just at that time it didn't work for me it, it's a lot to listen to um yeah but on that vein um kind of but not is of course honeybee Craig Sylvie the Australian mm -hmm. is um our honeybee I think he that right well? for an audio you know terrific yeah. absolutely terrific yeah. as audio because it was again the characters and voices so I also think um Cloud Street's worked well as an audio for me Brilliant. um listen Brilliant. to that regularly like probably once a year because yeah. the um it's got that Australian accent that really gives the characters voice um also grown-ups we listen to we've mentioned this before we listened to on a car trip yes and that yeah the Irish accent there really brought that one um to life there so I do think accent is kind of important for yeah. hearing the characters Yes, um, actually, with Tim Winton at the Shepherd's Hut, also that was a also was good audio. that was really good on audio. I really enjoyed that. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but on, I liked um, the bass, the bass rock. You know, the, uh -huh. uh, Evie Wild. Wild. Yeah, I liked that on audio as well because mm -hmm. that was three different characters and different times. Yeah, and that was really nice. That really worked. I thought, and the performance I loved. Oh yeah, that was that was beautiful. Yeah, that, was that also makes sense on audio because it's all about, about theatre and stuff like yeah, that. So it, it kind of feels really like it made for her. that reason. Yeah, yeah, yep. totally worked for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my my next big category would probably be um, more related to crime and thrillers. There's a big trend at the moment for um, podcast stories. Yes, yes. So where like there's like a, a crime being solved via yeah. podcast, basically since Serial came out. Yes. Um, this has been a trend in fiction as well yes. and um, I always find that that works really well as an audiobook so there was Sadie by Courtney Summers um, uh, Six Stories by Matt Wesselowski or something like that um, and I think there's one more that I've just oh, we've read. Had, we've had a few um, true crime kind of podcasts, podcasts. Um, yeah where it's you know conducted by a journalist and mm -hmm. and then has ended up going to back to court and yeah and you get the thing the, the yeah a, a, a murderer being tried right now so this is like that except um you know fictionalized so that's that yeah. whole this that is, whole yeah, genre this is not fictionalized and it's actually um going back in time though so it's picking up cold cases i guess yeah. and starting out as an investigative journalist but telling it like a story that then everyone yeah. listens to episodes every week and then it turns out, to be, you know, it becomes something that goes back to court. I just think it works really well as, um, as an audio book. Does. Yeah. Yeah, it works for podcasts. Well, it's if you think just... about it, it's like you're now reading a lot of Dickens on audio and when yeah. you think Dickens was written in serial form, wasn't it? Yeah, which works. I actually, um, my, my boyfriend was you know, he, having to hear my audiobook going on <laughs> in the background recently. And he was asking, um, you know, how long, why is it so long? Why, <laughs> why does it keep ending on like cliffhangers and things like that? And I had to That's explain that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a serial thing. So um, the story just kept going. <laughs> and I guess that's really interesting because audiobooks are like a development, I guess, from radio when that's what people yeah. did, was listen to stories and tune in at the same time each week. And then from there, that went, we went to TV shows that worked that way. So it's just yeah. a form of st storytelling. The platform's changing. Yeah. The other thing that um, in terms of storytelling, the other, the other category that I would sort of 
like it's kind of hard to define but that I kind of get turned to audiobooks for is like comfort reads of some yeah. kind and yes. for me that it's that all started when I was quite young um when audiobooks were super expensive and audible was not a thing um <laughs> and you had to buy the physical tapes um with Harry Potter yes when I would listen to that um when I was sick yeah. or had like cramps and things like that I, that would be the only thing that would comfort me was just listening to that story. and I think that was partly because the narrator was so great at doing um the different character voices and like putting on funny accents and that's what I'm seeing now with Dickens is like you're getting those different hilarious characters coming through with like the different voices um it's just the one narrator but he's doing all the voices really really well um and the other audiobook that that's worked really well with was um Nevermore by Jessica Townsend you know that middle grade grade Mm -hmm. book series I was telling you about that's like very whimsical fantasy kind of thing the characters voices are hilarious in that as well like they're all really distinct um and just really cute and comforting to kind of listen to so I put that into its own little category of like just feel good kind of thing (laughs) listens um I'm listening now to Oscar and Lucinda I'm not sure if I've mentioned it and yeah and that it's really working with audio form. It is. That's great. I, you know, I read it as a novel way back and loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And now returning to it on audio, yeah, it's just as great. It's really good. You know, That's good. And it is the, char- uh, the characters, you know. Yeah, I still haven't. I'm going to read it in October when we're um, yeah, possibly yeah, doing a, a read-a-thon for it, a read-along or whatever. Um, it's great. So them. there are recognisable places. So, you know, that's yeah, good for us. Interesting, you know, that you go, yeah, I know that place like the back of my hand and it's kind of nice. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. See, if, see if I feel the same way there. <laughs> see, it depends where the places are. Um, the other thing I was thinking of is have you ever had, because you usually just persevere through an audiobook, right? You don't really ever go no, like, really oh, this is them. No, not so much. Yeah. So are there any well, I audiobooks? Abandoned, I have abandoned some. Are there any that you've abandoned um, or haven't really fully enjoyed that you kn- know that you would have if you read it as a book? Like, are there any audiobooks where it would have been better as a book? Um, maybe um, Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky, I thought did not work on audio, really. I think better yeah. as a traditional proper. With too many characters with similar yeah. names? Yes. <laughs> yep, no, that didn't, did not work. Yeah. Um, uh, what else do I think didn't work? Um, actually, interesting, yeah, some, quite a few classics. Interesting. Oh, so I was going to say the same. I really was excited to hear The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy, uh, yeah. narrated by Alan Rickman. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I had actually searched for audiobooks narrated by Alan Rickman because I just thought he must have done some. And that was the one that I found. And I wanted to really love it, but um, it wasn't his narration. His narration was obviously amazing. Yeah. Um, it was just that the story I wasn't following. There was so much description and stuff like that that I know would be beautiful if I had, you know, the words, but it wasn't working for me in audio form. So I know I will like that book. Actually, <laughs> and no, I know it's not a problem with his narration. The um, Another one I thought that didn't work was um, Quartier, The Life and Times of Michael Kay, which is a beautiful, a yeah. slim but beautiful book. Beautiful. Uh, but I did not enjoy it in audio mm. form. It did not have that same I mean I'm so moved to to, you know like it was such a make you weep book when you read it in print but it did not have that effect in audio at all I thought it really really um detracted from from it um Mrs Galloway worked in audio Virginia Woolf okay interesting because you know with the whole um stream of consciousness you would think yeah you wouldn't well maybe maybe that could work almost maybe you worked even better really. better yeah I was just thinking maybe um because you're he- actually hearing someone's thoughts rather than having to yeah. like yeah yeah I, I thought that was really um, mm. my brilliant friend did not work as an audio for me yeah at all not at all and Ulysses was really too challenging and that's <laughs> I think I think what we're saying is really heavy classics yeah and that's really not consciousness. So, you know, you'd think if... So maybe Wolf not was, oh, yeah, a blanket no, thing. Wolf was only 24 hours and essentially one really main character. It's a much easier read in general it than Ulysses. Like a, a little bit of a nightmare without the words, I found. It, 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 
I can't believe like, you actually tried that actually. <laughs> and I thought, no, I'm just ruining my experience. Like, no. Why? But look, the beauty is it adds to you your it adds to your reading experience. It means you can yeah. take you can take your reading experience into a physically active environment. Mm-hmm. And you can or, do, yeah. you know, where whereas reading a book can be difficult obviously you can't be easily doing that on a treadmill with a book in your hand especially if you're really busy I would imagine um right yes not yeah. situation but I imagine if you've got like young kids and things like that it's very yeah. hard to find time to just sit down with a book whereas if you're That's on the right. go yeah and I, I'll tell you where else I, I like doing it is uh, I will I just put my earplugs in and when I walk to work it's really yeah. good and if I bump into people along the way which I often do it's also a sign that <laughs> you're not really I'm actually watching. in the process of something and so I don't get too held up whereas if you're mm. just normally walking along you can that's funny I, I think that everyone else has discovered that trick long ago mum I think like I that's what everyone walks around with the headphones on I've only just walked <laughs> that's like that's just this yeah this day well, and age I just, I've only ever just started doing it because I don't actually like having things in my ears so um yeah I've just discovered that lately and I, it makes <laughs> it makes walking to work very quick and very enjoyable again yeah and I look forward to it like I you know I want to get out the door yeah that's right and that's sort of, yeah what I feel about running with them as well because yeah. like I want to yeah, go yeah, I probably yeah probably don't want to go for a run a lot of the time but right. <laughs> if really? I've got a story going on then it's all right yeah so yeah yeah it's definitely something yeah. to add to you your repertoire yeah yeah, and there, there's um, so many on offer and so very easy to get. Yeah, yeah, and we don't want to be, you know, promoting any like um, particular service or anything like that. We no. both use Audible, but there's also um, Scribd, I think, is one, and you can get lots from your library for free as well. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, look, I found the li- the local li- our local library really was very helpful in that regard for my dad because he had MS mm-hmm. and his eyes were really, really weak. And reading was both from an eye perspective and from a concentration perspective. It was a really difficult thing. Really difficult, could, yeah. But he could listen to audio books. And the library is really helpful. Most libraries are really, really helpful there. And, and, they, yeah. will, and they will deliver the, the service to you. You know, they will share with That's you. Fine. It's really good, yeah. So, yes, we're not promoting a particular yeah. group. No, no, no. Um, we've, yeah, got a lot of problems with Amazon and things, but it, yeah, doesn't stop me though. Real <laughs> in reality, it doesn't actually stop me, but I know it's bad. Um, uh, well, yeah, I would love to hear what format you like to read your yeah. books in. Um, please let us know if you are an audible, audible, an audio book um reader, or if you, yeah, prefer just print only. Um, anyone like reading on a kindle or e-reader um let us know i'm always interested to see like what does anyone do them together do, do people there are yeah it's possible um it's yeah. definitely possible there are like uh i'm not sure if everyone does this but definitely kindle has um this service where you can you can get the audiobook and um, the kindle book together and um yeah listen as you're along which yeah would be pretty cool oh i didn't say that i do that with shakespeare um when I'm yeah so I I'm been trying to read through the Shakespeare plays and I um I bought again on Audible you can get <laughs> with one credit you can get the complete works of Shakespeare um fully narrated by the Royal Shakespeare Company oh so it's like oh. a full cast and everything yeah um but because I don't know the actors um and I don't like I'm reading the plays a lot of them for the first time I don't know the characters and things like that I found it was quite hard for me to differentiate the voices um, for particular characters without having the text in front of me as well so um, that's really helped my understanding because I, I felt like the text on its own was fine but I wasn't getting the full yeah you know the point is like it's it's you know it's supposed to be seen really it's, but it's, it's, obviously it's written for performance yeah yeah so. I felt like I was missing out just reading the text but then I also felt like just the audio was hindering my understanding on its own a little bit because yeah. I wasn't sure who was who. So yeah. putting it together has been the perfect solution for me. Um, and yeah, that's worked really well. I just finished Richard the Second yesterday. And right. yeah, definitely, definitely would say that that's a, a good way of helped you through yeah, tackling yeah. some of the some of the harder classics. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, there you go. Cool. Yeah. So let us know if you do anything like that and have what your reading habits are in terms of um, format. And yeah. If you have any recommendations for great audiobooks that sort of fit lovely. those categories. 
you were talking about as well. That'd be really great because I get to the point where I have my new credit or whatever and the stuff like that, I just don't know where to go. Same. So I have to decide what to do. Yeah. 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 That would be great. Thanks, everyone. All right. <laughs> cool. Yes. Thanks for watching and thanks in advance for any suggestions you have. Um, and yeah, we'll see you again next time. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.